These instructional videos focus mainly on residential building techniques. While the methods used in commercial construction are similar, commercial buildings may have special requirements not detailed in these presentations. Be sure to consult relevant codes and specifications before proceeding with any project to ensure all applicable regulations are observed. To avoid injury, comply with local safety regulations and follow tool and material manufacturer's instructions and safety guidelines. Buildings today demand reliable, energy-efficient, eco-friendly building envelopes that provide superior performance benefits to minimize energy costs, reduce carbon emissions, and maximize property value. Nudura structures offer superior strength, storm, sound, and fire resistance, and are why the design community, developers, and contractors across the world continue to choose Nudura's integrated building technology as a proven alternative to traditional building methods. We like working with Nudura and, and I think the ultimate thing is, is that the end result, you know, if we're doing a house for ourselves or we're doing it for a customer, you're getting a way, way better house. Building with Nudura gives you the opportunity to build faster and more efficient while offering your clients eco-friendly structure with substantial benefits that contribute to long-term energy savings. Nudura can be used to construct residential homes, commercial buildings, apartments, schools, hospitals, virtually anything you can build with traditional building methods, you can build with Nudura insulated concrete forms. A great product. We would highly recommend it to anyone. Here's how the system works. Nudura is simply stacked up to a desired wall height, braced, and then concrete is poured in place, providing six building steps in one. Form system, wall structure, insulation, air barrier, vapor barrier, interior and exterior finish anchorage. Once the concrete has been placed, the roof can go on and installation of services, windows, doors and all interior finishes can be completed. Nudura offers a variety of form widths for every project type. The standard form lineup consists of 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 inch core width forms with a standard EPS thickness of 2 and 5 eighths inches, offering R values of R24. Nudura completes the form lineup with 90 and 45 degree forms, brick ledges, paper top, T-forms, and a full line of unassembled forms for specialty installations, all featuring our DuraFold, Duramax, Duralock, and four-way reversible technology. Nudura also offers a line of innovative accessory form products which include brick ledge extensions, end caps with fastening strips, height adjusters, unassembled panels which allow for the creation of custom combinations such as double-sided taper top and factory cut radius forms. For forms greater than 12 inch widths Nudura offers the four-way web connector, allowing form sizes to go up to 24 inches. To make the installation process even easier, Nudura has created a line of accessory products that complement the insulated concrete form line. These products include the vertical joint clip, which will be featured later in this video, ceiling and floor technology, completing the building envelope, ICF connector, alignment systems, spray foam,
varieties of tapes. And waterproof membrane for hot and cold climates. For a full line of products, visit the Technical Center at Nudura.com and download a copy of our product guide. Along with foreign product accessories, Nudura offers an innovative line of complementary products to finish off the building envelope. Nudura sealing technology offers an alternative to traditional sealing insulation and integrates into the Nudura wall system, providing an easy to install, energy efficient solution for sealing insulation. Learn more about our sealing technology product by visiting Nudura.com. The floor of a residential or commercial building is often the most ignored surface when it comes to insulation. Nudura provides a variety of floor insulation options that are easy to install. Nudura floor technology comes with a tongue and groove system to ensure each panel securely fits together, maximizing energy efficiency. New to the Nudura product lineup is Nudura Hydrofoam for radiant heat installation. Nudura Hydrofoam provides an insulated base for radiant heat which can be installed up to 50% faster than traditional radiant floor installations. To learn more about Nudura Hydrofoam, visit Nudura.com. This list is intended to provide the contractor and their workers a guide for what tools are required on most Nudura projects. Although not all of these tools will be necessary for every project, the vast majority are essential to achieving an efficient Nudura build. In addition to power tools, Nudura has a list of recommended tools to make installation easier. A rubber mallet, bolt cutters, a pruning saw, foam gun, Nudura Low Expansion Spray Foam for filling gaps, sealing joints, and general purpose foam applications. Electric Chainsaw. Nudura Alignment Scaffolding System. Rebar Bender Cutter. Hot Knife Tool. And Pruning Shears. For a complete list of standard and miscellaneous tools and supplies, refer to Section 3.0 in the Nudura Installation Manual for more details. Site preparation will play a key role in ensuring the following installation procedures are completed most efficiently and that the project will be successful. The Nudura Basic Installation Methods videos are laid out similarly to how a typical building is constructed, starting at the footings and ending with the exterior finishes that can be applied to Nudura. Let's get started. Nudura forms can be used on basic strip footings, slab on grade, and grade beams connected to piles. If your project requires building on bedrock, Nudura forms are easily scribed to the rock profile, a process that is virtually impossible with conventional forming or concrete block. Consult an engineer if you have any concerns about footings on your project. Footing specifications can change due to a variety of site factors, along with factors such as finish types. To ensure footings are level, it is recommended that the tops of the footings are cleaned before placing concrete. When strip footings or slab on grade will be used, Nudura recommends that they be installed to within plus or minus one quarter inch or six millimeters of level. This tight tolerance in footing or slab level is one of the fundamental keys to ensure you are not doing unnecessary work later on. Dowels should be spaced according to required codes and specifications. Spacing of dowels will depend on the dowel bar diameter and will be a minimum of 4 feet or 1.2 meters on center if using number 5 or 15 M bar or 2 feet 600 millimeters on center if number 4 or 10 M bar. Once the dowels have been placed and concrete has set, be sure they are capped until the first sets of forms are in place. Ensure the layout is square using any standard method to locate corner pins. Next, snap a chalk line between the pins, locate windows and doors, and mark appropriately. When creating step footings, 
Check with local building codes for code compliance step heights. If the design will involve step footings, always remember that new duraforms are 18 inches or 457 millimeters in height. To avoid waste on site, installation works best if the step increments are planned in 18 inch or 457 millimeter increments. If stack heights are not in 18 inch increments, cutting the form to a half or partial height increment may be required. To make sure the first and second course of forms interlock correctly, ensure the first partial height step footing is exactly one half inch, 12.7 millimeters, lower than the partial form cut height measured from the cut to the shoulder or the meeting surface of the form. Once you have all the correct measurements, rip all the forms necessary to complete the first course. In this video, we will be working with 18 inch step heights. Once the site has been prepared, it's time to start stacking the forms. Nudura's innovative DuraFold technology allows the entire form lineup to be shipped flat. With Nudura, you can easily carry 36 square feet of wall area on your shoulder as the forms are lightweight and easy to maneuver. Staging the forms and tools on the inside perimeter of your project is recommended for faster installation times. Keep in mind that you will have to keep everything at least six feet from the walls for setup of the Nadura alignment system. The footing or slab area where the form units are to be installed should be free of dirt and debris. Special care should be taken during the installation of the form units to keep the wall cavity free of foreign material. This includes foam fray that will result from cutting the forms. Extra time spent to establish an effective layout pattern for the form units in the first course will save unnecessary cutting of form units and significantly reduce the need for form support during the build. Nudura recommends starting layout on the longest wall at each corner and working towards the center, working either clockwise or counterclockwise. This also allows the forms to lock together with the patented DuraLock technology. Additionally, as stated in the introduction, having the webs line up will virtually eliminate form compression during the concrete pour. Ensure the form units are tight end-to-end -to, -end to maintain proper dimensions. The Nudura vertical joint clips replace having to tape or tie wire forms. The clips will help ensure the corner and standard forms stay tight end-to-end -end and reduce labor during installation. Nudura recommends that for the first course, Eight vertical joint clips are used for both the corner and standard forms. When cutting forms to fill in the wall, be sure to cut the form away from the wall to ensure foam debris is not getting in the wall cavity. If cuts are necessary to complete a wall length, Nudura recommends where possible the form unit be cut on one of the cut lines indented into the EPS. The cut lines must be respected to ensure the DuraLock technology does line up. If dimensions work out and the forms can be cut to factory dimensions, four inches from either side of the web, the forms are simply cut and stacked. If the contractor installer needs to cut a form with more than 4 inches, 102 millimeters beyond the last web, on one of the provided cut lines, additional form support will be necessary to ensure that during concrete placement, these areas do not create a problem under concrete pressure. It's important to note that the vertical stack joint should always be placed in the center of the wall. One method is to use 1 inch 25 millimeter wide fiber tape to tape from one panel through to the other panel. Care must be taken to ensure the forms are dry and free from moisture as the tape will not adhere to the foam in these conditions. Cutting a 3 foot 914 millimeter long piece of form lock and installing it into each course 
helps to keep the joint in line. It is recommended that strapping be used to prevent bulging during concrete placement. Simply take a short length of strapping, long enough to extend past the fastening strip on both sides of the area to be reinforced, approximately 2 inches, 51 millimeters, and screw into the fastening strips. Typically, two straps per form height will be required to give sufficient form support. This method must be performed to both sides of the form. Again, cutting a 3 foot, 914 millimeter long piece of form lock and installing it into each course helps to keep the joint in line. Plan design may dictate the need to cut the forms off the guidelines provided in order to precisely conform to the floor plan. If you're faced with this scenario, simply butt the forms one against the other at the vertical seam up the height of the wall. Additional bracing on the interior and exterior of the wall will be required to resist concrete pressure in this area. Installation of a piece of form lock ensures the wall maintains straightness. Strap the wall with wood across the vertical seam. Pieces will need to be no longer than 16 inches, 400 millimeters, and a minimum of two pieces per course will be required. During first course placement, Nudura's T-forms need to be considered if they are part of the design in the same context that a corner form would be. Layout options should be similar to those discussed above by starting at the corners on long walls, working towards the center. Again, contractors should ensure they maintain a 16-inch, 406-millimeter vertical joint offset to best guarantee that the forms resist concrete pressure in this area. Radius connections will typically be butt or miter joints and will require a vertical stack joint of some type. The radius wall can be constructed independently of the rest of the build. For more details on radius wall estimating, assembly and construction, refer to the technical bulletin on radius wall construction included in Appendix F of the Nudura installation manual. Once the first course of forms has been placed, steel reinforcement can be added. Steel reinforcement is to be installed as per the plans and specifications prepared by a qualified designer and must conform to local standards, regulations, or codes. Horizontal reinforcing steel should always be installed into the notch locations provided in the web. And with the four-way reversible system of Nudura, reinforcing steel is always easily secured. Unless specified otherwise by the designer, horizontal reinforcement is always installed after each course of form units are placed. Nudura recommends alternating the position of the horizontal reinforcing steel from one successive course to another. This practice creates a cage that maintains the alignment of the vertical reinforcing steel, which we will discuss later. Depending on local building codes, you can splice rebar using either a non-contact lap splice, where the bars can be separated up to one-fifth the lap length to a maximum of 6 inches, 152 millimeters, or a contact lap splice, where the bars are wired together. In both cases, a typical overlap is 40 times the rebar diameter. With number 4 or 10M diameter rebar, this works out to 20 inches, or 508 millimeters just slightly less than the distance spanned by three webs. For formulas on calculating lap splice, refer to the Nudura installation manual. Nudura recommends that you cut 5 foot or 1.5 meter lengths of rebar and bend them 90 degrees and have them placed at the corners. This will save time during the installation process. When you get within one rebar length of the corner, install one of the pre-cut 90 degree sections of rebar. Cut the previous straight section to achieve the necessary overlap and fit it into place. To ensure the installation of rebar is completed with efficiency, installers generally mark the dimensions of the straight rebar on the wall. This allows easy reference for the installer cutting the rebar and lets them place the necessary number of pieces for future courses.
Nudura recommends that you start the second chorus at the same corner as the first chorus, following the same steps of working from each corner towards the center of the wall. When placing the second chorus corner forms, each corner form unit will be reversed to create an automatic 16 inch, 406 millimeter offset or bond stack with the form units on the first course. Remember to align the units in place and press the form unit firmly downward until the webs lock together with the form's Duralock technology. A rubber mallet is recommended to properly seat the forms. Nudura recommends that in the corners, four vertical joint clips are snapped into place, locking the corner to the adjacent standard forms. 16 inches, 406 millimeters, is the ideal offset for corner forms. A minimum of 8 inches, 203 millimeters staggering, of the vertical joints should be maintained between courses to ensure that the Duralock technology will lock the forms tightly together. Should a vertical joint be less than 8 inches, 203 millimeters, the contractor installer will need to add additional form support. Form support can consist of sheathing or lumber attached to the fastening strips. If the first course required a vertical stack joint, you will have to ensure that the forms on all consecutive courses are cut identical to the first course, and additional form support is added. Once the second course of forms has been locked into the first course, the horizontal reinforcing steel will once again need to be placed within the webs. Remember to offset the bar location by one notch from the corresponding bar in the course below to ensure the vertical steel can be easily woven between the horizontal steel bars. Once the rebar has been placed, Nudura recommends that a row of form lock be placed in the second row and then every third or fourth course after that within the cavity of the wall to help maintain wall straightness. To install the form lock, place it into the form cavity on a 45 degree angle with the welded crossbars facing up on the ledge of the web. This offsetting of the horizontal bars of the form lock will allow the form lock to be placed easier. Ensure each length of form lock overlaps the previous piece by 12 inches, 305 millimeters. Once the second course has been completed, the forms will need to be leveled to account for any uneven areas of the footings or slab. Although the footing slab can be checked prior to installation of form units, the best method is to correct any deficiencies after the first two courses of Nudura form units are installed. A laser or builder's level can be used to easily set elevations, ensuring the walls finish at the desired elevation. It is easier to fill in hollow or low areas under the form than to cut the form where footings are high. If you encounter a low area, shims are recommended to raise any low spots. Once the forms have been leveled, use Nudura Low Expansion Spray Foam to secure the forms to the footing. Ensure that the footing is free of debris before the spray foam is applied. Now that the layout of the first two courses is complete, the installer can now simply follow the pattern established within the first two completed courses of forms. For additional course placement information, please refer to section 6.4 of the Nudura Installation Manual. As additional courses are added to the wall, the Nudura alignment system will have to be installed to ensure additional forms can be added safely. The Nudura alignment system not only provides safety for installers, it also provides a platform for concrete placement and ensures that the walls are kept straight. Nudura offers two different alignment systems, the ST and RT. Both bracing systems bring advantages to the job site. Nudura alignment systems are available with our rack system to keep your braces organized and free from damage. Nudura recommends that the Nudura alignment system be installed after the third course has been placed. There are two reasons for this. Safety. 
The alignment system allows the installer the ability to safely place forms without having to use a stepladder. Support. Because the walls are unsupported until this point, installing the bracing will reduce the risk of wind damage during installation. Before installation of the alignment system can be completed, be sure that you mark all floor joist locations before setting up the alignment system to avoid the alignment system interfering with the joist locations. Mark all corner locations starting in the corner. There should be a brace located three webs from the corner in one direction and four webs from the corner in the other. This will allow the scaffold planks to properly align at the corners and will enable the turnbuckle braces to cross safely without interference. Once everything has been marked out on the wall, the contractor installer should check the alignment system to ensure it's in good working order. Check each component to ensure none of the pieces are bent, cracked, or worn out. Should the contractor installer notice any pieces that pose any type of safety risk, the pieces need to be removed from the set and excluded from use on the wall. Ensure the threads on the turnbuckle move freely for the full length of the threads. Should it become difficult to turn the threads, a light grade lubricant or general purpose grease needs to be applied onto the threads. The Nudura alignment system only needs to be placed on one side of the Nudura formed wall, preferably on the inside perimeter of the building. The box channels will be laid out on the wall at 5 foot 4 inches on center or 1.63 meters. This will allow for proper plank spacing as well as sufficient overlap. Attach the box channel ensuring the closed end is at the bottom of the wall. The fastening strip, as already mentioned, is located on 8 inch or 203 millimeter centers marked by a diamond pattern. Place the box channel against the wall so that the holes of the channel are in line with the diamond pattern. To ensure the box channel is plumb, line up the box channel to one of the cut lines next to the web. Take a number 10 Nudura hex head screw with steel flat washer. Place the screws close to the top of the slots at the back of the box channels and drive the screw into the fastening strip so it is snug. Do not over tighten the screw. If the screws are over tightened, forms will not slide vertically on the box channel during alignment. Install one screw per course up the entire height of the wall and install an additional screw in the slot immediately below the platform height. Next, connect the diagonal turnbuckle brace to the box channel using the 1 half inch 13 millimeter diameter gravity pin and anchor the diagonal foot pad to the ground or the floor with either drift pins or a number 10 Nudura hex head screw with steel flat washer. Contractor installers are responsible for the holding capabilities of the drift pins or fasteners that are used to anchor the diagonal foot pad base. Also, remember that different lengths of drift pins will be required based upon soil type. Once the diagonal foot pad base has been securely fastened, connect the catwalk bracket onto the adjustable turnbuckle brace. Install the catwalk bracket, ensuring that the hook is engaged over top of the adjustable turnbuckle brace and gravity pin connection. Take the second 1 half inch or 13 millimeter diameter gravity pin and install it through the box channel and bottom leg of the catwalk bracket, securing it together. Simply slide the guardrail post into the catwalk bracket stub and secure it together using the 3 8 by 2 and a half inch 9.5 by 63.5 millimeter lock pin. Add the necessary wood rails and toe kick rails as required along with the proper scaffold planking and secure them to the catwalk brackets. Ensure that the extension ladder is secured properly for access to the catwalk. Once the alignment system is in place, you can continue to place forms until you reach your desired wall height. Ensure that you attach the box channel to the additional forms as you work your way up. Once the alignment system has been set up, you can continue stacking forms to your desired wall height. Later in the video, we will discuss aligning the walls for concrete placement.
Window and door openings can be easily integrated into an Adura formed wall using a number of different buck materials. These methods can include pressure treated or wrapped plain lumber, Nudura EPS end caps with lumber material for the header, vinyl bucks, steel bucks, or the Nudura Easy Buck, a composite buck system using lumber inserts. The roof opening or RO dimension is the opening required to install the window or door. Always remember to allow for space adjustment and additional insulation if required. It's important to establish if the type of buck being used is stay in place or to be removed prior to the installation of the window or door. The RO in a stay in place buck will be the interior dimension of the buck. Remember to allow for the thickness of the buck material being used. Wood bucks can be constructed using 1 inch 19 millimeter or 2 inch 38 millimeter dimensional lumber that's been cut to 2 and 5 eighths or 67 millimeters less than the overall wall thickness. This approach has several benefits. There is no thermal bridging and it will be easier to apply exterior stucco. The buck will also serve as an inner fastening surface. When constructing bucks out of lumber for the openings, the sill areas need to be left open to allow for concrete placement. Nudura recommends that you use 2x2 two 38 by 38 millimeters or 2 by 4 38 by 89 millimeter lumber for the sill of the window buck. This allows access for the contractor installer to completely fill and vibrate the area below the window with concrete and also to screed it to smooth. When securing the bucks it is recommended that a bead of Nudura low expansion spray foam is run around the buck and then held in place with one inch fiber tape. Cross braces are also recommended to support the openings during the concrete placement. Nudura Easy Buck is also an easy alternative to constructing a stay in place buck. This process combines the Nudura Easy Buck system and dimensional lumber. When anchoring the Easy Buck to the wood, Nudura recommends the contractor installer use number 10 diameter, 4 to 5 inch, or 102 to 127 millimeter long screws and screw through the easy buck into the wood, extending the screw to the inside of the form cavity. This allows the concrete to cast around the screws, securing the buck to the structure. Screws should also be placed through the header of the buck to help cast it in place. Place a bead of spray foam along both sides of the buck in the wall cavity to seal the gap. Nudura recommends that fiber tape is used to support the wall during concrete placement. If you require a buck that is made of EPS, Nudura end caps are an easy alternative and use our innovative Duralock technology. With Nudura EPS end caps, the head of the buck is usually created with lumber in a similar fashion as for the wood buck. Simply slide the Nudura end caps down the edge of the forms using the dovetail design. Once the end caps have been inserted, Nudura recommends that fiber tape is used to support the wall during concrete placement. Radius top windows or entrance frames can be easily accommodated with Nudura using several different techniques. Nudura forms can accept a variety of buck options. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommended guidelines during installation. Prior to concrete placement, all required means of form support must be installed to resist fluid concrete pressures. Any corners of 8 foot or 2.44 meters or less from an opening will require form support, tying the corner back to the buck. Alternately, exterior bracing could be installed to provide support to the corner forms. Pre-planning of service penetrations will ensure additional labor is not incurred. Installation of service penetrations is a simple procedure. Simply cut a hole in the EPS using a keyhole or pruning saw for the sleeve as required. 
When laying out locations of sleeves, should a service penetration be located in the middle of a web, it is recommended to move the sleeve to one side or to the other to eliminate the need to cut the web, which will weaken the form. Once the holes have been cut, insert the desired sleeve that is needed. If there are multiple services, run the correct conduit to suit each size. Remember to leave enough material so that the subtray can easily fit couplers or fittings if they are required. For drier ducts or more flexible sleeves, consider fitting the cut plugs of the EPS inside the sleeve to provide additional form support to the concrete during placement. These can be removed later after the concrete is cured as part of the installer's final strip and cleanup. If it's been established that the penetration will have to be cut through a web, additional form support will be required. Penetrations larger than 16 by 16 inches, 406 by 406 millimeters, will require additional reinforcing steel. If a situation like this arises, please consult your local distributor for further installation instructions. When dealing with lintels, it is always recommended to install the rebar and stirrups as per the designer's specifications. Lintel reinforcement requirements will vary based on the loading conditions, the depth of the lintel, width of the opening, concrete strength, and wall thickness. Nudura has prepared engineered lintel tables for Nudura walls that can be used for submission to the building department as well as in the building process in field. For full information on Nudura lintel tables, refer to Appendix E of the Nudura installation manual. It's important to note that the tables do have two limitations. They cannot be used with point loads. They cannot be used with concrete mixes that are less than 20 MPA or 3000 PSI. If these two situations occur, an engineer's design is required. The top reinforcing steel will always be one number four or 10 M bar, which will extend 24 inches or 610 millimeters past each side of the opening. Start by laying the lower horizontal rebar onto the top of the header above the opening. If there are two lengths or more of rebar, tie wire the bars together. Install the required standard forms over the top of the lintel and place the top horizontal rebar into position. Clip the top rebar into the reinforcement notches or cradles located on the top of the webs. Measure and bend the stirrups in either a C or S shape. Note the stirrup dimensions and required spacing that are indicated in Appendix E of the Nudura installation manual. Hook the stirrups around the bottom bar at both ends and lift it into place, hooking the stirrups around the top horizontal bar. Once the bars are set, place the remaining stirrups as required. Placing vertical rebar is required around the openings. Thread the vertical steel down the wall. Vertical steel should be placed one and a half inch or 38 millimeters from the edge of the opening or placed as per specification notes. Nudura recommends you install a course of form lock over the openings to keep the walls straight. Once you've reached your desired first floor wall height, you can place the vertical rebar around the wall. Vertical rebar is threaded through the horizontal steel holding it in place. Once you've reached this step, there are one of two steps that can be completed. If you've reached your desired wall height, the vertical rebar should end at least 3 inches or 76 millimeters below the level to be reached by the concrete. Later in the video we will discuss options that are available when terminating a wall. If your project is to continue to the roof, there are a variety of options available to the installer to correctly continue placing second story forms. Nudura recommends that once the concrete has been placed, dowels are then wet set into the concrete. This method allows the installer to easily fill the forms and not have to have rebar impede his work.
Depending upon the stage of the project, there may be some additional applications that have to be completed before the concrete is placed. This special application section will deal with the following installations. Floor connections. Beam pockets. Brick ledges. And gable ends. There are several methods for the connection of floor joists to the wall which include the following. The ICF connector system. Simple anchor bolt. Modified anchor bolt with moment connection plate. And ledge support. Should the floor connection be something other than light frame wood floors, an engineer's design will be necessary for the reinforcement requirements for the walls. This video will demonstrate the installation of the ICF connector system and how to install a ledge support. The ICF connector system is probably one of the fastest and easiest methods for floor attachment with the least amount of additional labor. To install the ICF connector, slit the forms in the specified joist locations and insert the plates into place. Once the connectors have been placed, it's important to check the connectors after concrete placement to adjust any that may have shifted in position. Fit each joist with a bearing bracket. In most cases it will be necessary to insert cut pieces of plywood to fill in the joist cavity for proper attachment of the bearing bracket. Once the bearing brackets have been attached, position the joist between the insert plates and secure the joists to the insert plates with six number 10 hex screws. It's important to note that a minimum number 10 hex screw is to be used with the system. A ledge support can be constructed using a combination of Nudura standard forms along with a row of taper top form units which will create a ledge for your floor joist to rest on. To create a ledge, you'll have to start with a combination of form sizes. If the desired form size is a 6 inch or 152 millimeter cavity wall, you will have to use a 10 inch or 254 millimeter wall below grade and then make the transition to the 6 or 152 millimeter. The smaller width form must be able to create a ledge that by code will allow enough end bearing to support the joist. Most building codes require a minimum of one and a half inches or 38 millimeters. Stack the forms and follow the course placement procedures as outlined earlier. Once you've reached the transition joint, you will utilize the Nudura transition bracket. Place a transition bracket 16 inches or 406 millimeters on center. Simply clip the bracket onto the top of the rebar installed in the form below. Align the bracket to the web indicated by the diamond pattern and then screw it into place once the form above has been leveled. Once the concrete has been placed, install anchor bolts as per the local code that will connect to the sill plate giving a connection point for the floor joist. Using this combination of Nudura forms and accessories, you can incorporate the use of both bottom and top cord bearing floor joists into your design. Beam pockets can be placed anywhere along a Nudura wall. Additional vertical reinforcing may be required at these locations to ensure the loads of the beams are transferred correctly throughout the wall section. Start by marking your beam locations, then use two of Nudura's end caps and slide them into the cavity of the wall with the smooth sides facing the concrete. Once the inserts have been placed, be sure to leave access to screed the concrete to level after it's been placed. This will reduce the number of shims required for the beam to rest on. Nudura recommends placing a 20 gauge steel cap over the top of the end caps to act as a concrete dam. After the concrete has been placed and cured, 
Cut and remove the foam material from the beam pocket area and install the beam as per typical construction practices. Nudura brick ledge form units provide an easy way to create a ledge for masonry loads. With the extensive lineup of Nudura form accessories, creating a corner brick ledge is very easy. There are two options available, a full form miter cut or use Nudura brick ledge extensions. To miter cut the brick ledge form units, take two brick ledge forms and miter cut them. Follow the profile of the corbel on the outside panel. Create a square cut on the inside panel to complete a corner form condition. When you miter cut the forms, you'll have to pay special attention to the form interlock. You'll have to perform this at each corner where the brick ledge meets. The second option is to use the Nudura Brick Ledge Extension or BLE. The BLE can be used to continue a brick ledge on a 90 or 45 degree corner. Start by positioning the brick ledge extension on the long side of the 90 degree unit, ensuring the BLE aligns with the adjacent brick ledge form unit. Once the BLE is aligned, use the bottom edge of the BLE as a straight edge and mark a horizontal line across the form. This process can then be repeated on the short side of the 90 degree form unit. Use the BLE as a template for the removal of the foam from the 90 degree corner form. Trace an outline using the inside of the BLE. Be sure to use the straight edge already drawn on the form for correct heights and location. For correct fastening, be sure that the ribs of the BLE line up with the webs of the form. Next, position the BLE on the long side of the corner, 12 inches or 305 millimeters from the existing brick ledge form unit, and mark the unit location where the BLE is to be miter cut. Position a BLE on the short side of the corner, leaving 12 inches or 305 millimeters overhanging the end of the corner, and mark the location. Once marked, this 12 inch or 305 millimeter section can be removed. Move to the other end of the BLE and mark the miter cut location. Next, remove the locations between the webs you previously marked in the 90 degree form. This will allow the concrete to flow into the brick ledge extension during the concrete pour. Ensure that you cut the bottom of the pockets on the same angle as the brick ledge form unit. Once all of the cuts have been made, reinsert the 90 degree form unit. Fasten the brick ledge extension with 6 inch or 152 millimeter long screws fitted with plastic washers, available from your local distributor. Nudura recommends two screws be installed per rib, one at the top of the BLE and the other at the bottom. Reinforce the corner seam with Nudura low expansion spray foam, filling the gaps that may be present, and reinforce the corner with fiber tape. If the BLE is to be installed on a slope, refer to Appendix F of the Nudura installation manual. The steel needed to accomplish the reinforcing for the brick ledge consists of two different pieces. The first is the horizontal steel location in the main cavity of the wall. Its location is critical as it helps to support the brick ledge stirrups. Nudura recommends that the horizontal steel be placed within the second notch of the web from the inside face of the form. The second piece of reinforcing steel is inserted into the notch locations on the brick ledge extension. This piece of steel acts only as a holder for the stirrups. Finally, install the stirrups throughout the brick ledge around the perimeter of the wall. Stirrups should be placed every 8 inches or 203 millimeters at the center of each web space. The versatility of the Nudura form lineup allows contractor installers the ability to use Nudura standard forms or Nudura panels with insert webs to create a gable wall. 
In this demonstration, we will be using our Nudura form units with hinge pins. Simply cut the forms to the desired slope. Remember that the cutoff portion is not waste and can be reused on the opposing side of the gable. This piece may require additional trimming to ensure the slope matches. If this method is followed, it will result in very little waste. The cut edges of the gable will require additional form support during concrete placement to prevent flaring out of the panels due to the cutting of the webs. Simply take 1 inch by 4 inch or 19 millimeter by 89 millimeter or similar material and screw it to the fastening strips of the panels. This will ensure the gable ends maintain straightness during concrete placement. The Nudura alignment system can then be installed to support these areas as previously talked about in earlier sections of our video. If the design calls for window openings located within the gable, the buck options discussed earlier will still apply. For rebar and lintel reinforcement, refer to the Nudura installation manual in Appendix D and E for correct reinforcement of gable openings. When placing concrete into the gable ends, it will be necessary to reduce the overall slump of the concrete from the typical 6 inch or 152 millimeter to about a 4 inch or 102 millimeter slump. Also, depending upon the gable end slope, it might be necessary to reduce the pore lift heights from 4 feet or 1.22 meters to 2 feet or 610 millimeters. Consolidation of each lift is critical to ensure voids do not occur within these areas. Once the structure is ready for concrete placement, there are a couple of steps that should be taken to ensure that the pour goes smoothly. It will be important to pull a string line around the outer perimeter of the walls and hold it up from the corners with strapping. If the wall is not being terminated, it will be important to tape over the interlock to ensure it's kept free from concrete flowing into the interlock which can prevent a form connection for the next course of forms. Next, sight lengthwise down the wall and adjust the turnbuckles on the diagonal braces until the wall is slightly concave with respect to the strength. You will use the alignment system to finish straightening the wall after concrete placement. It's important to ensure you follow the pre-placement concrete checklist and refer to the tools for concrete placement located in the Nudura installation manual. By following this guide, you'll be sure that the concrete pour goes smoothly. The concrete mix design must meet the engineer's specifications and conform to national and local standards, regulations, or codes having jurisdiction. For the recommended Nudura compatible concrete mix, refer to the concrete specifications and placement section of the Nudura installation manual. Various methods of placement can be used depending upon the accessibility to the site and the characteristics of the project. Other variables such as temperature, mix design, and reinforcing pattern in the wall may influence the builder's decision as to the technique selected for the concrete placement. The most common method is a concrete pump. For other methods of concrete placement, refer to the Nudura installation manual. When using a boom pump, it's important to have a maximum 4 inch or 102 millimeter diameter reducer, followed by a double 90 degree bend to reduce the velocity of the concrete entering the wall. In addition, it's recommended to use a 3 inch or 76 millimeter diameter flexible hose to better control the concrete flow, especially when working with a 4 inch or 102 millimeter cavity Nudura form. 
Be sure to wear proper protective equipment when placing the concrete. Fill the areas below the windows first and then work towards the corners. Do not point the discharge tube directly into the corners. Fill the areas adjacent to the corners and allow the natural flow of concrete to carry it into place. As per ACI 304 and CAN CSA A23.1, in North America, concrete placement rates should not exceed 4 feet or 1.2 meters of lift per hour. When placing concrete, the contractor should avoid stopping a pour against a buck or in a corner. To ensure the concrete bonds to all reinforcing steel, anchors, and embedded parts such as bearing plates, the concrete must be consolidated. Nudura recommends internal mechanical vibration as the most effective method for consolidating the concrete. A 3 quarter to 1 inch or 19 to 25 millimeter head diameter concrete vibrator is the most versatile since it can be used with any Nudura wall width. Ensure that the vibrator is long enough to reach to the bottom of the wall. To ensure proper consolidation, it's recommended that you insert the vibrator quickly and remove it slowly at a rate of about 3 seconds per foot or 0.3 meters. When consolidating subsequent lifts, the consolidating tool must completely penetrate the lift and extend into the upper portion of the previously placed lift to ensure proper mixing of the concrete at the interface between these lifts. Now that the concrete has been placed, recheck the wall alignment against the string line and tweak it if necessary. Clean any concrete splash from the footings, forms, and alignment system. Do not remove the alignment system at this time, since the concrete has to be supported for at least 48 hours while it cures. If the wall is being terminated, finish the concrete one and a half inches or 38 millimeters below the top of the forms to allow room for a sill plate, screed the concrete level, and wet set the sill plate anchor bolts. In this example, the installer will be building to the roof and has stopped the concrete pour just below the top of the wall. Wet set dowels approximately 40 inches or 1.02 meters in length, about halfway, to avoid a cold joint. Once the work is complete, the crew finishes off with final cleanup of the site and equipment. A post-placement concrete checklist is available in the Nudura installation manual. Building codes require damp proofing or waterproofing when the interior floor level is below the exterior grade level. Nudura damp proofing waterproofing is a self-adhesive peel and stick membrane designed for below grade damp proofing and waterproofing applications. Nudura offers two types of membrane. The summer grade adheres to the EPS foam and weather conditions of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius and above. The winter grade membrane can be applied to the Nudura EPS foam in temperatures as low as 14 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 10 degrees Celsius. To install, ensure that the wall surface is smooth, dry, free from dust and dirt, and any other impurities that could be on the wall. If the EPS foam surface has been exposed to sunlight for extended periods of time, the resulting yellow dust coating must be fully removed in order for the membrane to adhere properly. Installation works most efficiently with a two-person crew, one handling the material from each side. Establish the finished grade level around the entire perimeter of the building using a chalk line or a marker. Begin material installation by cutting strips of membrane 16 to 24 inches or 406 to 610 millimeters in width. Fold strips in half vertically 
These will be used to pre-seal all inside and outside corner conditions. At each inside corner, starting at the footing level, peel and release paper away and apply the strips in a shingle-like fashion from the base to the top of the corner. Installing the strips vertically so that an equal amount of material is applied to either side of the corner. Take care to press the fold tightly into the corner so that no air pockets are trapped behind. Then press or roll the membrane flat to the wall surfaces on either side using a plastic roller as necessary. Each strip of material should lap the strip below it by 6 inches or 152 millimeters. Continue application and lapping of the strips to the grade line. Next, select an outside corner and measure from the chalk line to the footing. For sloping grade lines, measure to the longest side of the membrane. Roll out the membrane on a flat surface and cut it to the required length. You should note that depending upon the prevailing code requirements, it may be necessary to cut sufficient length of damp proofing or waterproofing membrane material to wrap the membrane downward over the outer exposed edge of the footing and slightly down its vertical surface. Peel back the release paper about one foot or 305 millimeters. Align the top edge of the membrane with the chalk line. Ensure one side of the membrane extends past the corner by approximately half the width of the strip. Use the score lines and the form face as guides to keep the membrane vertical while installing. Continue down the surface of the wall by further peeling back the release paper and pressing and or rolling the membrane into position. Repeat the process down the length of the wall to the footing. Now press the membrane into place down the opposing wall from the corner following the same steps as previously mentioned. For service or utility penetrations, cut a 12 by 12 inch or 305 by 305 millimeter piece of membrane, then use the pipe as a template to cut two cross cut slits at the perimeter of the membrane. Peel the backing paper away once the piece has been placed over the pipe to avoid it sticking and slide the piece into place. Press the membrane piece firmly into place, sealing the flaps against the pipe. Next, you can now start to install full sheets of membrane on the wall. Be sure to overlap the membrane by about 2 inches or 50 millimeters as indicated by the blue lines that are drawn on each edge of the membrane. This will ensure correct overlap of the membrane. Press the membrane's upper edge into place, gradually peeling the backing away. Proceed downward, pressing the membrane into place, working from the middle towards the outside of each sheet, downwards towards the footing. For sites with coarse backfill or risk of sharp edge aggregates, Nudura recommends that a backfill protection layer be installed. Also, depending upon local prevailing code, the backfill protection layer may be required to be a formal drainage layer as well. Consult with your local building official and your local Nudura distributor to be sure. The parge coat material is an important element of construction that is unique to the Nudura installation procedure. The purpose of the parge coat is to provide a smooth finish to the exposed wall between the final grade of the building and its above grade finish material. In addition, the parge coat also provides continuous drainage protection to the top of the Nudura damp proofing waterproofing membrane finished edge, ensuring that water cannot penetrate behind the membrane. The surface of the EPS foam first has to be prepared to receive the parge coating. Start by rasping the Nudura EPS foam to improve the coating adhesion and to remove waves, bumps, and UV degradation. Prepare the parging mix coating according to the directions on the bag. Apply a base coat of parging mix overlapping the membrane by 1 inch or 25 millimeters. Extend the parge coat to either the underside of the brick or stone veneer finish or lap at least 1 inch or 25 millimeters underneath any non-brick finish. Next, trowel a layer of fiber mesh into the base coat. 
Nudura recommends putting a double mat of fiber mesh on inside corners, outside corners, and corners of openings. These areas are susceptible to increased damage from exposure to everyday events. Overlap the fiber mesh joints a minimum of 2 inches or 50 millimeters. Apply an additional coat of parge if necessary to ensure the mesh pattern is not visible. Apply the finished coat of parging 24 hours after the base coat has been applied. Architectural designs can now be created on the finished coat to suit the requirements of the structure. All electrical installations will need to conform to the local electrical authority or to the appropriate code body along with the applicable standards for the region. Local inspections of the electrical will be required before additional work commences on a building. When mounting the main panel onto a Nadura wall, it's recommended using a minimum 1 half inch or 13 millimeter thick plywood base. You can attach the plywood directly to the fastening strips or make a direct connection to the concrete wall if desired. The plywood base will also allow the electrician to staple the wires. Most North American codes require electrical wire to be embedded at a minimum of one and a quarter inches or 32 millimeters in depth within the foam. A variety of tools can be used to cut a wire chase within the foam. The three fastest and cleanest are an electric chainsaw fitted with a depth guide wheel, a hot knife, or a reciprocating saw with the blade trimmed to not exceed the cut depth greater than two and one quarter inches or 57 millimeters. The electric chainsaw offers the fastest way of cutting a friction fit chase. Simply set the depth gauge to the desired depth and run the saw along your planned layout. There are a variety of methods for electrical box installations. A hot knife with a box attachment provides one of the easiest ways to remove the EPS. Once the location of the box has been established and the required amount of EPS foam has been removed, it's recommended to run wires to the box prior to anchoring the box to the wall. Specialty developed by CF boxes are available from companies such as IPEX. The Annexco box has been specially developed for use with insulated concrete form walls. The product uses a claw system that penetrates into the foam from both sides. The claws are easily removed in the case where one side has to be fastened to a fastening strip. Traditional installation of boxes with a stud flange can be screwed to the fastening strips located every 8 inches or 203 millimeters on center. Other box types can be anchored through the back of the box to the concrete with a concrete screw or nylon plug and screw combination. Fitting the wire into a snug fitting chase is the easiest method of keeping a wire in place. To ensure the wire is firmly placed in the back of the chase, use a flat, dull object to ensure the wire is not pierced. As shown in this video, the installer is using a Nudura insert web, which makes a practical tool for fitting the wire. Be sure to consult the local electrical code or electrical safety standards for your region. Once the wire has been placed, run a bead of Nudura low expansion spray foam over the wire and trim off any excess material once it is dried. Metal or plastic conduit can also be installed into Nudura forms in the same manner as traditional wiring. If conduit is necessary, it must be mechanically anchored with clips and screws into the concrete core. The same rules will apply with Nudura as with traditional construction when it comes time to install the plumbing. All plumbing codes must be followed with regards to the water lines, vent stack pipes, and waste piping. Despite the most ideal planning, inevitably the situation will arise where wastewater vents and pipes will require installation within a Nudura wall. If a vertical waste stack is required to be installed within a Nudura wall, there are three options for installation. The most common application will be a partially recessed stack cut into the foam. For details on how to install a non-recessed 
partially recessed, and fully recessed stack. Refer to Chapter 10 of the Nodura Installation Manual. Once plumbing work begins, simply remove the foam with a saw or hot knife. Install the vent stack and anchor it in place inside the chase. Nodura's foam thickness can accommodate vent pipes up to 1.5 inches or 38 millimeters in diameter, complete with couplings, without having to provide additional chase depth. Always be sure to follow local building codes for plumbing installation. Before finishes are applied, the contractor installer needs to take into consideration some additional fastening requirements needed for handrails, curtain rods, heavy wall hangings such as flat screen TVs, large mirrors, heavy artwork, and upper kitchen cabinets. Start by ripping 4 inch or 102 millimeter wide or wider if needed pieces of 5 8 or 16 millimeter thick plywood for the regions where fastening will be required. Then cut the plywood segments to the required length and screw them with number 8 minimum flathead coarse thread screws into the webs. This method can be used for a variety of installations. Mounting of flat screen TVs can be completed in a variety of ways. Nudura recommends raking the foam to allow for a piece of 5 8 or 16 millimeter thick plywood to be inset into the form and fastened to the fastening strips. This will allow for the drywall to be placed directly over and concealing the plywood. Gypsum board installers can install their material directly onto Nudura walls using minimum 1 and 5 8 or 41 millimeter length gypsum board screws. Baseboards can be fastened directly to the gypsum board using a combination of adhesive and nails. Should the contractor decide to attach a band of plywood the same thickness as the gypsum board, this step needs to be completed before the gypsum board is installed. Building with Nudura allows you the same finish options as traditional construction. Nudura structures can be covered with a multitude of different finishes. Exterior finishes must be installed over the EPS in accordance with the building code and local requirements and ensure manufacturer's suggested guidelines are followed. It is also important to note that all exterior finishes requiring mechanical attachment will require the use of screws in place of any nails that are specified in the manufacturer's installation instructions. Consult with your local distributor for more information. When installing brick or stone veneer, there are a couple of steps that Nudura recommends. In this example, the mason is installing stone veneer and is about to apply a through wall flashing in accordance with standard building practice and code requirements. Start by chalking a line 6 to 9 inches or 152 to 229 millimeters above the brick ledge. Using a circular saw, cut a 45 degree kerf cut upward one and a half inches or 38 millimeters deep into the Nadura form. We will show you why this step is necessary in a moment. Next, after removing the paper backing, apply Nadura waterproof just under the kerf cut and apply the adhesive surface of the membrane downward over the face of the wall, then running horizontally outward over the brick ledge, leaving an overhang. Ensure all local building codes are followed for all through wall flashing installations. Once the membrane has been installed, place the metal flashing into the kerf cut to shed water over the top edge of the membrane. For more information on exterior finish installation, please refer to the Nudura installation manual or contact your local distributor. For more information on Nudura insulated concrete forms or any of our accessory products, please visit us at nudura.com or within North America, call 1-866-468-6299. For clients outside North America, contact us at 705-726-9499.